the feds might show up and ask, but you have no obligation to answer. You have no obligation to talk to them, and nor should you. They're not your friends. These are people who make a living putting people in a box. Don't talk to them. What's up, everyone? So imagine you have a stall at a flea market, right? And you have this stall, you've had it for years, and the place shuts down, right? But when it shuts down, it locks the doors, and maybe it's at midnight on a Wednesday when no one was there, and now all of your stuff is there. It's trapped inside this building, right? And you, there's no way for you to possibly be able to get it. Now, what ends up happening is the person who owns the flea market tells you, hey, listen, I have all the, every person that's ever walked in and bought from you, I got their picture, I have their information, I recorded all the conversations that you had, and like you're going to pay me a fee, or I'm going to release all of that information. That's pretty much the thing that's happening right now with Incognito, where you have active extortion tacked on to the exit scam, which is absolutely nuts. I've never heard of a, a dark net market exit scamming and then proceeding to try to extort every customer and dark net vendor. And this is exactly what they're doing. Essentially, they're saying, we have all this information, we're going to release it if you, this you know particular ABC vendor, does not give us money to not release it. First off, the built-in, I had covered in the archetype video, I had covered the whole fact that having built-in encryption is a absolute red light and you should not trust built-in encryption. You should always encrypt your own stuff. This is a great example of why that is. In that video, I cited the, the Hansa issue, but always encrypt your own stuff. And th this is exactly why. Now, what is the actual threat to people who are buyers, who bought products through vendors, if a vendor refuses to pay, which in my opinion, they absolutely should. So remember, don't or else, okay? Because if you pay an extortionist, it's only, it's not going to end. It's going to be a repeated thing. Why would they stop extorting you? If they can come and grab 20 grand, which is the the class five vendor, that's exactly what they're telling them that they need to pay is 20 grand. So to believe that an extortionist is going to extort you once and walk away is an idiotic assumption, especially when that person or that admin has already screwed you over by saying everything is encrypted and then it not being encrypted. So you signing on and paying this person who already lied to you is insanity. They are obviously ripping you off. They ripped off everyone on the market. It's just absolutely insane to me that you actually have vendors who are paying this extortion fee. I can go into a phone book and grab a bunch of names and numbers and addresses. Does that mean then that I, I can get every one of those people indicted? No, absolutely not. It makes absolutely no sense because that information, your information, I don't care who you are, is all a matter of public record. Even people that are multi-billionaires, you can, if you're good enough at OSINT, you can find that information out. So paying to keep that information a secret, especially when you're paying someone who already lied, someone who they just did an exit scam. They just started this exit scam like a week ago, and now they're going to try to move it to level two with extortion. I think I would I would be weary of, of any any vendor who instantly snaps and says, okay, okay, we'll pay, we'll pay. I would be very, very leery of doing business with any of those people ever, because obviously, for one, you succumb to pressure very easily. Two, the threat of this of, of information being leaked that makes you break instantly tells me a lot about you. It's like there's a, a methodology where if you want to see if someone breaks you, me and you are in an elevator and I say, hey, you want a piece of gum? You say, no, I'm good. I say, okay, you sure? It's, 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 I just got it today. Oh, no, I'm good. Are you sure? I just opened the pack. It's fresh. Oh, no, I'm good. 
here, here's a piece. If at some point you're like, yeah, okay, fine, give it to me. You, it shows me a little bit about how you will fold under pressure. I have evaluated to a certain degree. You know, and, and it's not a great measurement by any means, but my point is with these people who are supposed to like, these are vendors, they're supposed to be very OPSEC alert. And like, if you, if you listen to Darknet Demystified at all, that that's really like not the case. But my point is immediately all these vendors that pay to keep their customers safe, I would immediately look at like you're an idiot because you don't, obviously you have no idea that with a simple address, you're not going to get someone indicted. Like worst case scenario, what's going to happen is if, if someone gives them the address, the feds are going to come knock, come knock on the door. What you do in that situation, you walk up to the door, you look out, you see it's people you don't know, you lock the door and you go back to whatever the hell you were doing and you ignore them. You have the same obligation to open your door for feds or Jehovah's Witnesses or Gandhi. You know, you have no obligation to open your door for anyone. Just as a measure of basic security, you should be careful about who you open your door to. And this sounds like common sense when we rephrase it like that. But no one has the, if they had the authority to come in your house and question you, they wouldn't be knocking, right? They would be kicking in the door or they would be forcibly coming in. You would not have a choice in the matter. They're knocking and trying to get you to talk because they don't have enough to arrest you. And they're hoping you're stupid enough to talk yourself into catching a case. These vendors who are spending 20,000, giving it to an extortionist who just robbed them, right? literally just robbed them a week ago. Now he's coming back for seconds to rob them again. Pharaoh, who's the administrator apparently of Incognito, coming back for seconds to rob them a second time. It's absolute insanity that anyone participates in this. By all means, that everyone should be giving this guy the finger. No one should be paying him. You, you cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt with an address, oh, this person ordered an ounce of Coke a year ago and and that's not going to pass just even a a common sense litmus test again the feds might show up and ask but you have no obligation to answer you have no obligation to talk to them and nor should you they're not your friends these are people who make a living putting people in a box don't talk to them right all of this should be understood by someone participating in the system from the get-go you should know what opsec is you should understand at least a basic rudimentary understanding of the legal system. You should understand if you're breaking the law, what laws you're breaking, what are the consequences for those? And you should know what that is because that's what you, if, if you found, if you're found guilty on something, that's what you're going to be forced to, it's a meal you're going to be forced to eat. So understanding what could happen is valuable, but understanding your own rights is absolutely fundamental and shouldn't even be, like to, for it to even get to this point where I have to make a video about not paying an extortionist is insane. It's like me telling you, hey, here's a Sharpie. I want $3 million for it. Like your reaction would be to laugh at me, right? You would laugh at me and rightfully so because it's a ridiculous claim. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm Spider-Man. Like, like you're just going to be like, this dude is, is nuts. You're a moron. And for any any credibility whatsoever to be given to someone who's already robbed people is is just absolutely nuts to me so that would be that's that's my whole thing pointing out the fact that no one should pay this person incognito market started to exit scam on march 9th the admin even went as far as to make posts on dread coming at users and he said thank you all for your constructive feedback really appreciate it speaking of innovation we just figured we'll exit in a new way. Vendors, we got a final little something for y'all waiting in your vendor panels. When vendors logged in, they saw this message that you know was directed directly at them that basically went on to detail that the market admin had been lying for all these years and collecting all this data and the effort he goes into to try to extort people over innocuous information of uh, uh, I can hop on right now and get anyone's name and address. Does that mean that 
I can have them indicted with their name and that? No, of course not. It makes no sense. So basically they pointed out that they have a little bit north of a half a million orders, which is who cares? Like you have anonymous order receipts for transactions. Congratulations. It's just, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It's idiotic at best, but it's great fear mongering and it's worked. You have a bunch of vendors who are actually on a list that was put together where the, the ranges of demands for money range from a hundred dollars to 20,000. And according to this, you've already had a ton of these vendors sign up willingly to pay the extortion fee. So not only were these vendors robbed, but now they're going to come back and they're going to lick the boot of the admin who robbed them. This is a horrible business practice. Like if, if they're going to extort you, they're not going to stop. It's going to happen again and again and again. And if you do pay this money, what it would show to me, if I was a dark net buyer, every person on this list that willingly paid this, I would be like, you're weak. You're weak and you don't know what your liability is. You don't understand the laws. Obviously, different countries are different. I'm not an expert in foreign law, so I'm not speculating on that. I'm speaking specifically for the U.S. If any of these vendors are U.S. based and they gave in and they immediately said, OK, yo, we'll pay anything. Huge red flag. Aside from that, it's it's a it sets a big historical precedent for the first time that a market has actually extorted dark net vendors after it exit scammed. It's like you really can't become much more of a scumbag. In any case, I wanted to make a quick video on this just to get it out there and really have this discussion. I really hope that this new case of a market exit scamming and then coming back to rob everyone a second time over is a great educational opportunity for the darknet community as a whole to kind of come together and coagulate and, and bond and realize that first off, don't shoot yourself in the foot by not using PGP. Don't trust a market. Don't trust anyone to do your encryption by you. But aside from that is get to know your rights, like research. I don't care what country you're in. Try to figure it out. Look it up. Understand. Because all of that should already be understood. You should already have, you should know how you're going to operate if you get a love letter. All of those things should have been things you evaluated when you were looking at like, what's my threat model? And then starting to implement the five stages of OPSEC. All of those things should have already been done. Should have been done already. My point is with these, with these vendors who don't have those plans and they just freak out. It's a major problem. In any case, thank you guys for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.